Now let's talk about one of your foes who was also a friend at one point in your career. He is the total package Lex Luger. Uh, Nate, you made a lot of wrestlers in your career. I think Lex Luger is one of those. You made Lex first by association and, and then in your matches. I thought he was very much connected to you. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, I think he's there this weekend, too. I'm looking for... As is Ken Patera, so... Sometimes I, I, I do these shows just because it's fun to see Kevin Nash will be there, Sting will be there. But, uh, yeah, Lex is just... I've got nothing but good things to say about him. He's been through a world of shit, but, but he's held his head high, and... Um, I think the company has him on a... Uh, I don't know what they call those deals, um, where he's like a, like an ambassador for the WWE, a le- huh? A legends deal? A legends contract, yeah, which he deserves. He worked hard at a time when the business was tough. He put his time in. He worked hard, and he was put in a tough position. You know, it got heat with other guys with, because I would take all these press slams and stuff from him, and he wasn't. But he couldn't do a lot of other stuff because. Like Goldberg, in a different way, didn't have the opportunity to learn. Because he looked so good, they go, shit, you're going to be in the main event next week. Remember I told you I had to wrestle him for an hour in Daytona? And he had never wrestled more than two minutes, right? So I wanted to kill Bob Roop and uh, Hiro Matsuda, who booked the match, but we made it. Um, but... Um, you know, I, I just I feel terrible what happened to him um, with his health and all this stuff with Liz and that. But I really like Luger. I have a lot of time for him. And uh, <clears throat> they're doing a documentary on him. I just got to speak on it. And I, you know, to come back from all that, I think he's a really a, a remarkable human being. And I'm glad to see that he's in a good place, which he is. Well, well you kind of touched on this, but when Lex first came to Crockett, how green was he? Because he'd green. been wrestling a couple of years in Florida where you, mm-hmm. like you said, had that long match. But, uh, but but he had barely wrestled and his matches were kept short, which was advisable. But as you mentioned, it didn't help him learn. Um, ask me that one more time. How green was he when he came to Crockett? Green. But when you you're, when you have to use that, that, that measuring stick in terms of he, if you're putting with me, Tully, Arn, and JJ, you're going to be green. I mean, you know, like everybody's green at some point or another, but to come in and expect to perform at that level, so, you know, we all helped him because we all liked him. And, and, you know, he was like, he was like this little kid. He didn't drink or anything, you know, and of course, he was just an incredibly handsome guy. I had, I had a ball with him. I used to take him out and have him take off his shirt in the bars. And... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about just, that, Nate, hey, because... Hey, just like, just like I did with Batista. Hey, if, I could, if, I, if I could get Batista in a bar at night in the old days with Evolution, because Randy and Hunter would never go out, I'd have Dave's shirt off in Fargo, North Dakota in 30 below zero weather. <laughs> Every chicken Fargo was there. <laughs> Now, now, speaking of that, Luger's body was incomparable, wasn't it? Oh, I mean, my God. It, yeah. it would be a top body today, any generation, really. Absolutely. Now, he, uh, go he's ahead. He's the first guy that taught me anything about nutrition. Is that right? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Lex went right into the mix of the four horsemen, first as an associate and then as a full member. Was yeah. that too much too soon? No, it worked, but it, it was a lot of pressure on him when they put him in singles matches with me for the world title. As, as long as he was with me and Tully and Iron, all he had to do was flex and slam a guy and suplex somebody, and he, he wasn't afraid to, to, to feed in on, and stuff like that and take comebacks on him. He, he, he wasn't, you know, his, he didn't have the experience to be great, but he, was, he, he, did, he filled the role very well. And he looked like a million dollars. How can you look like that and, and, not, and, and not add something to the party? You know what I mean? Your take on removing Oli from the horseman and breaking up that original chemistry, a bad idea. What was your take at the time? Well, I thought Oli was fabulous, but he, he had decided at this point in life he wanted to watch his son 
who was an amateur wrestler and that, and, uh, you know, kind of like I got to do when, when, when Eric fired me, I just went home and played with Ashley and Reed. And I had more time off during the time. And I, uh, you know, I, I had zero time off when I was NWA champion to spend with Megan and David. So I did, you know, he, he lived right there in Atlanta and uh, he wanted to spend more time at home. But Ole, re, re, replacing Ole is a big step. Ole, Ole had a great interview. He was a good worker, solid, but he was believable. And Ole and Arn together were, were good. Not, not nearly as good as, as uh, Arn and Tully, but old style, uh, Ole was good. Well, Luger was in the Horseman for less than a year. Uh, was that the plan when he joined? I mean, you had to break him off and go babyface and do matches with you. But then the Horseman became a revolving door, which wasn't good. Well, no, we, we had Barry for a long time. That wasn't right away. We had Barry for a long time. So I think we had Barry for at least a year and a half, didn't we? Before Something it became like a that, revolving yeah. door. Yeah. So started out with Arn or with uh, Ole, then it went to Lex and then Barry. Barry is a great worker. Like, you know, we, we, we talked about using the word great freely. Barry Wyndham was a great worker. So to put him with the, with the rest of us, we were, we were our all time high as, as a heel combination. Never anything like it in the business, even close for four guys. Now you feuded with Luger in '88. In, in, in my modest expectation. Oh no, no, no! I, I think that was the, I think that was the best version of the Horseman in terms of the actual working yeah. ability. I, I do have affinity for the original version with Oli because it was the original version, yeah. and nothing in many cases, whether it's a musical group, a wrestling faction, rarely does anything top the original version. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, like I said, you feuded with Luger in 88. Those matches were good. Some of the finishes weren't, like that stoppage for blood at the Great American Bash. Uh, not a great finish, but I guess what else were you going to do? I don't know. That's, um, I can remember they almost... They almost <laughs> the commissioner looked at me and said, if I find out you cut yourself tonight, you'll never wrestle in Maryland again. The old guy used to drive me crazy. I said, oh, I'm not doing anything like that. I said, I know how you are. You always get out there telling me I can do it and you start bleeding. I said, that's my accident. I said, bullshit. You're always cutting yourself. I see you. I'm watching. No dummy. I've been watching this for years. You know, <laughs> okay, okay. So when we did it, actually, it, I whacked myself so good that it, it was believable. And it was different. A lot of people didn't like it, but it was, it was unique and I was beat. You know what I mean? He had me beat. But they had the referee, which they hadn't seen. And us, Dusty came up with that, and you know they stopped fights now, UFC and in boxing for blood. And I was bleeding more than those guys were, so <laughs> I, probably, I, I, probably, I probably whacked myself two or three times. <laughs> How was Luger to work with behind the scenes in those days when you worked against him? Oh, easy, easy, fun. He just would say, "We just." He, I told him, "I." Said, I you know, he and Sting, I never said anything to the guy. I said, guys, let me hear the crowd. You've got confidence in me. We'll, we'll tear it down. All I, would say, all I would say to those guys is, look, at, we got to follow Tully and Arn and Akita and Dusty and all that, and, and whoever, the road warriors. we got to follow those guys. So look through the curtain every time you get a chance to, to look, and look at what they're doing because we got to give them something better. We're on last. That's our that's our job. And I'm not gonna I'm not going to the bar until the ring until we make the crowd at a frenzy like these guys are. And following the road warriors against the Akita and Akita or uh, following the road warriors against Tully and Arn was brutal. Or God, or the mid, the midnight against the rock and roll. Come on, I mean, that, those, those cards were so hard. If you were on last and the guy was with me, they knew. Number one, I was going to carry 14 blades and cut myself 14 times. And number two, the match was over until we got him standing the way we wanted him because I, I refused to go back to dressing him second best. Not, not that I didn't a few times, but it wasn't um, wasn't because I wanted to. Just sometimes the matches were before us were so damn good. A lot of talent, now, man. Now, you left for WB in 1991, and Luger won the WCW title. 
and was mm-hmm. kind of a lame duck. That's that's not an ideal circumstance to win your first world title, is it? No, absolutely not. All, all her had to do was pay me. The money he owed me. So it, worse than that, all he had to do was fly me to Columbus where I was going to drop it to Barry on TV. He, he said, screw you. It's documented. So I said, it's not screw me. It's <laughs> you, screw you, Jimmy. I was go- I, I was gone, and three months later he was fired. So, or something like that, a year. I thought it worked out great for you, Nate. Pretty good run in New York. Fantastic! I got to hang out with DiBiase, Piper, Hogan, the Nasty Boys, the Road Warriors, <laughs> um, Brett. I mean, and by the way, I, I I was looking at the comments last week about good guys who could sell real well. I did not mean to leave out Bret Hart. Bret Hart could sell his ass off. So for those that I upset with that comment, I got to throw Brett in there. He Brett could really sell for 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 a big well for a well built bigger guy. So well, as far as I'm concerned, we're here to upset people. So mission. No, no, no. But I mean, you know, I'm always when you ask me those questions I'm, on the fly, I can think of the first three, but I didn't mean to exclude uh, Brett because I I always thought Brett was a really convincing seller. No, I have lots of regard for Brett and all the aspects of his work for sure. Now, Luger then went to WWE and got a big baby face push as a Hogan replacement. But WWE mm. never gave him the title, never went all the way with them. Why do you think that was? Do you have any insight on that? I do not. I've never asked. But to take him all that or take him all that way and then not give him the title is what is what killed him riding around in that bus all summer, the whatever it was called. The Lex Express. Yeah, and I thought for sure they were going to put the title on him, so I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, I, I can venture to guess that it was somebody, you know, pulling a political string here or there, but I don't, I don't know the exact fact. Okay, then Luger showed up on the premiere of Nitro out of uh-huh. nowhere, the first Nitro ever at the Mall of America, Minneapolis. It'd been at SummerSlam for WWE just eight days later, but had been working without a contract and, let his no-compete expired. Were you surprised when that happened? Heck, even I was. Um, yeah, I guess I was. But I'd heard that, um, I, I, I'd heard, you know, because that you know, the grapevine runs, I'd heard somewhere along the line that his contract was up. I didn't, I'd not know if he was showing up there. But um, that, that's, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that because I, well, Nate, the trick was that he he worked without a contract for the period of his no compete. Yeah. He was negotiating, but but you know the the no compete expired, so he could go from one program right to the other, which mm-hmm. was extremely rare in those days. And yeah. uh, it, it did make a big impact. But I, I thought he kind of spun his wheels during that run in, in WCW. He won the title again, feuded with the NWO, joined the NWO. But how much of it was really memorable? And I I don't think that's on Lex, but. Again, not a lot stood out. Well, number one, nobody that was up against NWO stood out. That's true. Because that, that was the show. It was built around NWO. So, um, I mean, uh, Sting always stood out, but, um, you know, it was, a, it was a new time, a new faction, and, and, and they ran with it, and they were successful with it. Ultimately, um, I, don't, I don't think that NWO... You know, if it, if the, here's my, and I t- tell uh, Kevin this all the time, if they just stayed those three guys, th- they might still be there. Does that make sense? If it had but, just th- been those three it, guys, if it had been kept small and exclusive, uh, it would have had a much longer yeah, and better I, run. By the, by the end of the, by the end of two, like two years later, there were 30 guys in NWO. It was like, if you think they deluded the horsemen, what the hell did they do with the NWO? I no, mean, it, I, was, it was Kevin, Scott, and Hulk. That was it. After that, it was all, I, I can't, I mean, I know who some of the people were, then there was a red and a, and a white, but I mean, the NWO, you saw who got inducted in the Hall of Fame, and Waltman. I, I like, Waltman was great there. So, but after that, it was all diluted. Well, I thought that the turning point downward was when they started to bring in guys that weren't ex-WWE. The whole idea is that it was an invading army, even though that violated copyright and had me do depositions with effing Jerry McDevitt for eight hours at a time. But, but you know, when they started bringing in, you know, I mean, no knock on Buff Bagwell and, and no knock on Paul White, but, but 
that wasn't the intent when they started the NWO. Exactly. So it's, uh, not, it's, that, it's not an indictment of anybody. It's just it's, it's things that happen, you know, and and, no, and nobody knows. I, I suppose Kevin probably knows. I've never asked him. I'll see him this weekend. It's an interesting question, but um, I don't know why they kept adding on to it. Now, Lex but, nev never went back to WWE. Do you think he burned a bridge when he showed up on that first Nitro and surprised uh, WWE? Probably. I would guess, yeah. Because they don't take stuff like that well, do they? Well, there's two ways to look at it. Either they were aware of it and didn't, and didn't care about signing them, or um, they were mad. And I've never heard, I've never asked. So, yeah. I mean, I, it, it goes back to the thing with Brett. Um, you know, I mean, I, they just couldn't afford to pay Brett the money that he was making. And that's how this whole Montreal screw job thing came about. I, I, at the end of the day, it had to be about money. Um, at the end of the day, it always is. Yeah. So there again, I'm just on the outsider. I've heard 30 different stories. But if, if they're struggling with a payroll issue, I mean, to this day, the company will make a big. You can see a guy gone tomorrow that's not, not earning what they think he should be earning or is making more than they should be earning. And, and not contribute enough. The same, the same applies to the women. Yeah, but now it's a little disingenuous because they do have those giant TV deals. That said, if a guy's not pulling his weight, that's the way the wrestling industry's already worked. Well, Far but that, it's not just the wrestling industry. It's, it's pro sports. We, we, it, we always throw it under the, under the umbrella of wrestling. If you're not making it as a lawyer, you don't become a partner. If you're not making it in football, they cut you. If you're not making it in basketball, they cut you. Or you go home in basketball with a with a toenail that's bothering you and take a month off making $40 million. Or you refuse to get vaccinated, you don't play at all. Then again, I don't, I'm not sure if Kyrie Irving is getting paid or not, but I imagine he is. Absolutely. Now, uh, finishing up with Lex. Lex was a big star. Could he have been a bigger star? Mm. I don't know the answer to that. In, in which company? Uh... Either one, really. You see, I think Lex was awesome. I don't think he's remembered like you or Sting or Mach. I think he's just a slight level below, and that's no knock, but but that's where he is. Well, no, but that's that that's longevity. And we talked about that word last week. You don't become one of us if, I, if I'm allowed to be in that group in a ten year period. I mean, that's basically how long his career was, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Well, now let's move on. Let's look at no, some of the... Am, am, am I right about that, Hall? No, 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 you're right. I, I think I think when you from, stick from around... From 89 to 2000, yeah, something like that? No, no, I, 80 is like 15 years. Yeah, yeah, he was around about 15, 16 years. I think when you're around as long as guys like you and Sting and Randy and, and Hunter, I think that's when you go from top performer to iconic. I think that's when you become part of the vocabulary... Yeah. When it comes to pro wrestling, I, I think that is a difference, yes. A absolutely. Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, yep. yep. 